In the heart of the Navasgain National Forest, just beyond lakefront properties and worn down barns, a large split homestead can be found proudly displaying two businesses, Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn. What isn't so proudly displayed, though, is worthy of an entire video. Welcome to episode 5 of the Untold Stories of Navisgain. In this series, we're going to explore and dissect the most interesting places in the default setting of Seven Days to Die. From mountaintop mansions to fortified factories, we're going to learn the stories of those who didn't make it. I'm actually particularly excited about this one, as I've had multiple requests for it, and I feel as though most players who have spent at least a few hours in Navisgain will be somewhat familiar with this location. So let's see what we can find when we dive just a little deeper. Starting at the front, we can find what probably used to be a lovely entryway, but with nobody to care for the apparently rather fragile trees, the lawn, and the massive hole in the roof, this place has come to ruin. Now before we head inside, there are actually a couple of details outside to check out in the backyard. Apart from the usual erosion and decay, we can see the back is quite neatly split down the middle. On the left, from this perspective, we have corn, presumably Carl's, and on the right, we have, well, something a little more interesting. A large red cage decorated with grand purple lettering. Grace. This entire side of the yard is fenced in, and a trough and ample hay for feeding are available to whatever prized boar probably lived in its own area here. Perhaps this one was more of a pet than a commodity to Bob. There are also two entrances to separate basements back here, but we'll get to those in time. With the stage set then, let's head inside. Usually I would start from an obvious point of entry and work my way up or down, making the occasional snide comment while describing and dissecting what we see, but this lovely manor is actually a little unique in that it's split right down the middle into two completely separate spaces. So for reasons we'll get to later, We'll start by exploring the left, then move on to the right side. Besides, the door on the left is practically already open for us, so let's head in. At first, when we enter, other than the hideous wallpaper we've seen one too many times, there's not a lot going on in here, until we take a look into the first room on the left, and the room next to that, and the room next to that. This entire floor looks like it's been entirely stripped of any real furniture or amenities and is dedicated to housing boars, albeit poorly. Where things get really strange, though, is the kitchen. And I'm not just talking about the travesty that is the use of this space. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the remains everywhere. There are four piles of remains in this kitchen, one of which sloppily <laughs> just <laughs> slapped on top of this poor stove. <laughs> In a previous installment of this series, we actually attempted to dissect exactly what this texture is supposed to be. I'll cut to the chase and just tell you, we can't really be sure. However, as one comment pointed out in said video, there does appear to be a pig snout in the midst of the gore. With that in mind, while I'd love to go on about how Bob might have become a cannibal to survive the apocalypse, it seems much more likely to me he simply was forced to resort to slaughtering his boars in order to keep himself fed once the shit hit the fan. And that does seem quite likely, reasonable even, until we make our way down to the basement of this side of the house. Now we have a lot more room for speculation. Ten piles of remains litter an entire corner of this basement. There are also a couple more caged boars and some unfinished laundry down here. Actually, how the hell have these boars survived? Always more questions. Okay, quick tangent. From what I found, a well-fed pig can survive a couple of weeks at most without food, much less without water, so either the timeline of this apocalypse that we've been working with is way off, or someone's recently been keeping these boars fed and watered. Anyway, back to the piles of remains. Why so many, and why are they just littering the floor of this area? Again, I'd love to go on about Bob having a psychotic breakdown and murdering people or slaughtering and eating zombies or something, but this conveyor belt and this rendition of a machine tell a different kind of story. It looks to me this machine was meant to grind things down, to process, given the extremely varied diets of boars and that Bob was probably mostly feeding them hay, given how much of it we can find in this place. He wouldn't need anything like this to process food for them, so it's much more likely this was built pre-apocalypse to process the boars. So all that probably happened here was Bob doing what Bob could. 
He slaughtered and processed his boars in the basement, brought them upstairs to the kitchen, and kept himself fed, holding out as long as he could. So, a male boar can weigh, on average, almost 200 pounds, a female not too much less. I actually very loosely did the math on how much meat one could harvest from this many boars, and how long one could survive on it, and to make a long story short for you, you wouldn't be very healthy, but you could survive quite a while if the meat was stored properly. Which it probably wasn't, given the conditions Bob was faced with, which is probably why he had to slaughter so many of his boars. With that mystery solved, let's head back upstairs and make our way up the rest of this side of the house. The second floor looks like where Bob actually lived, at least during his time alive in the apocalypse. Up here we have a bathroom, some sort of work slash storage room, and a very messy, very broken down bedroom. There's one more room on this level that seems to be entirely dedicated to grace. It contains a cage with a busted window and a door that's been broken down from the inside. From outside the bedroom, though, we can start to get an idea of what might have happened to good old Bob. The bedroom door is shut and boarded up, along with the door next to it, which leads to the stairs to the third floor. At some point, Bob had to seal himself in here. What happened to him after this is actually quite hard to say. There's no obvious signs of him being killed, and there are plenty of ways he could have escaped if need be. Immediately next to the bedroom is a large hole in the exterior of the wall, with no clear way zombies could have made their way here to create it. Upstairs on the third floor, where unsurprisingly more boards can be found in cages, but are surprisingly still alive, there's actually a pretty clear path for a far more dexterous than a zombie human to make their way to the window at the end of the floor and escape the building, leaving clueless zombies behind. So, perhaps Bob of Bob's Boars actually made it out of here alive. Perhaps he survived for a while on his stock, eventually having to fall back into the safety of his bedroom. From there, there are really only two outcomes. Either he escaped via one of the aforementioned means, or he's now one of the zombie occupants of this house. There's not much more to say about Bob's side of the house for now, so let's move over to Carl's corn. On Carl's side of the house, we see a similar layout to Bob's, the biggest difference being perhaps the much more practical kitchen. The first floor of Carl's side of the house boasts a workroom with chemical and medical supplies, and a glass enclosure containing a single stock of corn. But this is no ordinary corn. This is a living specimen of super corn. What exactly Supercorn is and how Carl created it isn't yet entirely clear to us, but based on the rudimentary lab equipment, we can surmise that simply breeding for the best crop wasn't all it took to create it, but perhaps more on that later. On the second floor of Carl's side of the house, all we'll find is ostensibly Carl's bedroom and bathroom, and further access to that single, well-protected stock of Supercorn. This access point, however, is a little peculiar. Clearly, there used to be two rooms here, but one of the walls has been haphazardly knocked down to make way for a series of ramshackle pipes sprawling from a control console to the vat containing the supercorn. Based on the state of the entire house, one could almost assume both Bob and Carl were living in strange and almost manic conditions even pre-apocalypse. But given that some decor still lingers on the walls of what once was probably the master bedroom up here, I think this specific installation was constructed post-apocalypse. Why, then, might Carl continue breeding his super crop in the midst of a zombie nightmare? It's possible that if he and Bob shared the fruits of their labor, they could have sustained themselves nutritionally for some time, but it doesn't make a lot of sense for Carl to redouble his efforts on this project with the world collapsing around him. Surely, constructing this lab and spending so much time and energy on one mildly superior to regular corn crop wasn't the best use of Carl's time. I have an idea, but we'll get back to it. Let's take a look at the top floor for now. Up here, we'll find something unsurprising. A haphazard farm of sorts. Though the crops are all but withered away, it appears Carl was attempting to bolster his supply of food by growing regular corn up here perhaps even creating this hole in the roof himself to allow sunlight and the occasional rain in. What's a little unexpected, however, is the amount of cement mix stored up here. This isn't all, either. The next room is filled with nothing but cement mix, so what was all of this for? To answer that question, let's head back down to the final spot in this house we haven't yet explored, which I'm sure those of you familiar with this location have been eagerly waiting for me to get to. Carl's Basement. 
Down here, we'll find a few things of interest. An artificial greenhouse built and sustained underground, even more stacks of cement mix, and a mysterious vault door. We can also find that the basement access from the backyard has been completely collapsed. So, what's going on with this greenhouse, this green room? Why go to even more lengthy efforts to breed a crop only slightly better than normal corn? Well, interestingly enough, Supercorn was actually nerfed not too long ago. While it's only very mildly better and more useful than regular corn is now, it used to be a superfood of sorts in-game. One could reasonably sustain themselves on Supercorn alone with a good harvest before, so if we use that as canon now, I actually have an interesting theory. Perhaps it was just coincidence, or just my game stage, something else in the game, but while exploring this house, I happened to find several military uniform zombies, specifically on Carl's side of the house. What if the US military actually caught wind of Carl's project and decided to get involved? In a world where supply lines have been thinned to near nothing, it's not unreasonable that in their efforts to survive and protect who they could, hopefully, local military units might prioritize not only protecting but aiding somebody who is producing such a valuable resource. It's actually equally likely in such a scenario that these were the remnants of a nearly wiped out unit, perhaps survivors from Red Mesa, and when they found this house and decided to take shelter, they stumbled upon Carl and his corn and decided to stay a while, protection for food. Since we can't know for sure, let's take a look at that eerie vault door and see what's on the other side. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to chalk this one up to boars. Okay, first off, is this where all that cement was going? To build this? More importantly though, what the hell is this? Well, it looks fairly similar to Bob's boar grinding machine, but these are human corpses piled on the assembly. All manner of states of remains can be found here, all waiting to be... ground up? For what? Well, here's where it gets disturbing, because I think we found Carl's secret to his super corn. This large vessel at the end of the line, ostensibly where the product of the machine's labor might be dumped out, it appears to just be filled with dirt, but I don't think this is just dirt. I think this is a sort of human compost. I think the secret ingredient that makes Carl's corn so special may be human remains. Even more disturbing is the question begged once we figured this out. How long has he been doing this? Was Carl selling human corn pre-apocalypse? This is quite the machine to have built after the world fell apart, but I suppose it's possible. The corpses on the machine line aren't the only ones here though. There's a large hole in the wall, a tunnel that leads down, and a short path of corpses can be followed through it. At the end, a simple room? Well, anyone who's explored this area knows all too well, this is a trap. Well, perhaps a trap. Carl's original intent wasn't a trap specifically, but the thin layer of lumber here isn't enough to support the weight of a person, so when you step into it... Hello. Now this is quite the sight, and half the reason we're here. What appears to be a giant, irradiated boar stands ready in her den, surrounded by over a dozen corpses unceremoniously strewn about the cave. But seriously, what the hell is this thing? Why is it down here? How has it been trapped down here? Was Bob up to his own wicked schemes? If so, why would this cave be connected to Carl's basement? Unfortunately, many of these questions we simply don't have answers to. If we follow another tunnel in this small network, we'll find a stash of supplies, a couple of bedrolls, and unsurprisingly, a couple more corpses. Perhaps a couple of survivors that picked a very unfortunate spot to hide out. At the very end of this tunnel, a ladder leading up, and what do we find at the top? Grace's cage. <sighs> There's a lot to unpack here, and as usual, not a lot to go off of, so here's my best guess. As the world around them began to crumble underneath the weight of the zombie horde, Bob and Carl, owners of Bob's boars and Carl's corn, hunkered down in their shared estate. Carl redoubled his efforts to grow a superfood, a single crop that could nourish someone on its own for a significant length of time, while he and Bob survived on Bob's boars. But there was one prized boar Bob refused to slaughter, Grace. 
In order to protect her, Bob built her an enclosure inside. Eventually, remnants of the nearby military base or fortification made their way here as well, seeking shelter. This is when this former business estate became one of the most dangerous locations in Navis Gain for wandering, desperate survivors. With the aid of the military personnel, Bob and Carl lured people into their home, promising shelter. But as those people slept, they were murdered, their corpses brought down to Carl's basement, and ground up to be used as fertilizer for Carl's Project Supercorn. As the first batches of Supercorn became ready and were eaten by the occupants of this house, Bob of course shared some of his with his favorite boar. Eventually, doing this gave her a taste for human flesh. How she got to be as big as she is now, how she became an irradiated hulk of a boar, is fairly unclear, but what is clear is that she became too dangerous to keep in the house any longer. So Bob decided to keep her down below the house in a natural cave. Tunnels were dug so that the occupants of the house could reach her and feed her. To what end they continued feeding her people is also unclear. Perhaps they intended to use her as a last resort defense. Perhaps Bob was just so fond of Grace he couldn't let her go. Either way, the false sheltering and murdering of innocent survivors continued for some time until Carl, Bob, and the soldiers all... vanished. It's hard to say what exactly happened to all of them. There were several ways they could have escaped the house if they needed to, but there is one other possibility. Perhaps Grace became completely uncontrollable, attacking and eating any person she could get her teeth into, including Bob. It's possible Bob and even the other former occupants of the house now lay here in a twisted ironic grave, slaughtered by their own creation. Or maybe they're all out there somewhere. Maybe the house became overrun, supplies ran dry, surviving here simply wasn't going to work. If they are still out there, somewhere in Navisgain, let's hope we don't bump into them. Until next time, thanks for watching.